Welcome to Mastering X eBusiness Lecture Series. From this lecture, we are pointing out what are the benefits and what are the issues when conducting an eBusiness. When you move into eBusinesses, you should possess a better understanding of the good, bad and the ugly of eBusinesses. Now let's start with the good, the benefits. The basic principle underneath the economic benefits of e-business is its impact on reducing the transaction cost. The transaction cost in the sense all the cost that all the participants have to bear. Now this chart it presents several transaction modes. A transaction through internet, ATM, telephone and branch. Branch in the sense of physical transaction. It shows the cost for one transaction in each mode and there you can see the branch transaction got the highest cost when compared to the other modes. That is because in a branch, in a physical office, you have to maintain workers and you have to provide accommodation and other facilities for these workers. Therefore, the cost is high when you are maintaining a physical office and that is for the businesses. You have to consider about the cost for the customers. So when you are having a physical office, for the customer they have to travel to this physical office and there is a cost in that. Now the next mode, the telephone mode, there you need to maintain telephone operators, that means workers. So once again you have to provide accommodation, facilities, salaries and there is a cost in that. And also, there is initial cost to build up the infrastructure, the telephone network, which should be efficient to handle the telephone calls. For the customer, there is no traveling cost, only the initial cost to have the telephone. As a result of all of this, the cost is much higher than the other two modes, but lesser than the branch mode. Now the next mode, the ATM mode, there is a high cost in building up the infrastructure and also there is a maintenance cost. But we do not need to maintain a large group of workers. That is the benefit of this transaction for the business side. And for the customer side, yes, there is a traveling cost. But other than that, there is no cost for the customers. Now the last mode, which is the most important mode, the internet. As everything is automated in here, we do not need to maintain workers. Only the people who are making decisions are involved in here. And yes, there is some initial cost to build up the infrastructure, but that cost is much lower when compared with the other modes. So with this chart, you can understand how the new technology has plummeted down the transaction cost, especially the technology internet. Okay, now let's look at how each party can receive benefits from e-businesses. We first take a look at business organizations. The first one e-businesses expands the organization's buying and selling opportunities to international market with minimum capital cost. That means they can have the global accessibility and then buy advertise globally and then buy reach new customers globally. And as a result, they will increase the market share. Now the next one says e-businesses enable the companies to procure materials and services rapidly and at less cost. That is because we are avoiding the middleman, either remove the distribution channel or make it shorter. As a result, the profit margin usually the middleman keeps will not be there. The next one. Low inventory cost as items can be made according to the demand allowing product customization. As businesses can directly access the customers and customers can directly make the orders from the businesses, Businesses can start making the product when there is an order. Therefore, no need to maintain an inventory. There is no pre-made products to store in an inventory. And the other benefit is businesses can make the products according to the customer's preferences. So the customization feature is there for the customers. Now the one last thing. Can use to overcome competition. As with e-businesses, we can capture and attract much customers. It is easy to face with the competition. Now we are looking at the benefits to the customers. The first one. Can locate less expensive and customized products or services quickly and conveniently. 
With e-businesses, we are providing virtual stores, not like physical stores, going here and there to look for a product. We can search, we can filter and easily find the product for our preferences. Now the next one. More choices in selecting products and services. Here we are having a virtual store, not a physical store, a virtual store. Therefore, no need to have physical space to store the products. As a result, the product catalog is much bigger. We can have different colors of the product. We can have different sizes of the product. We can have different patterns of the product. And even customers can request their needs. The next one is low prices. E-businesses have this effect of lowering prices and that is because we are avoiding the profit margin usually kept by the middleman. And as a result, poor people can improve their living standards. And the last benefit is talking about the people in developing countries and rural areas. They have the access to products and services they would otherwise not be able to purchase. In these areas, the physical infrastructure and the facilities are not sufficient to build up businesses. As a result, for people in these areas have less choices. But with the internet, they can virtually access any business. Any business that they have never been able to interact previously. Now we are moving into benefits to the society as a wall for both customers as well as the businesses. For e-businesses, there is no geographical barriers or time barriers. It enables transactions 24 hours from any location. Another benefit is less traveling for all the participants. For example, as a customer, you do not need to hang around physically in the store. You can virtually hang around without traveling into the store. Another one is cut down delays because there are no manual documentation. Everything are computerized. So when an error occurs, it can be corrected on the spot. Another benefit is it enables improved efficient and quality service because we can make online orders rather than going to the place and make an order. As a result, it enables continuous and convenient communication between the participants. So, this will improve the customer relationship. When talking about the financial aspect of the benefits, there is no need to fear regarding the fraudulently printed money because every monetary transaction is happening in the electronic platform. As a result, it will improve the financial management. And now the most important benefit, the reduction of the cost as we previously discussed. Even with its high potential and the benefits, e-businesses has to cope with several limitations. And these limitations make it slow down the growth and the acceptance. Now we can broadly categorize these limitations as technological and non-technological limitations. Many believe that these limitations, especially the technological limitations, will reduce or will be surmount in the coming years. We first go with the technological limitations. The main limitation in the developing countries and the rural areas is the lack of ICT infrastructure. Another problem is insufficient data bandwidth. Some people cannot afford sustainable bandwidth connection to the internet and some areas doesn't have that facility. And also, there is still no universally accepted standards for quality, security and reliability in the e-business arena. We have identified the need of such standards, but still they are upbringing to accept it as universal standards. And the last one we have listed down here is the most important issue, the lack of technological skills. There is still shortage of workers who can deal with the e-businesses and who can handle the e-businesses. Now we are moving on to non-technological issues. The introduction of the e-businesses raises a several safety issues. The privacy of the people is the major one. For example, most electronic payment systems identify who the buyer is. Therefore, it is necessary to protect the buyer's identity. And as normal web users, the programs such like cookies can be a threat to the privacy. And web tracking can be another danger when concerning about the privacy. And another major issue is resistance to change change from physical platforms to the virtual platforms and some are still comfortable only with manual paperwork and face-to-face -face transactions and some are fear that they can lose job with the growth of the e-businesses as they get redundant so it is very much difficult to handle such kind of social and attitude problems 
Then we can identify another issue as low number of participation as buyers and sellers. And that is totally due to the lack of skills in the e-businesses. Another fear that we can identify is the fear of security vulnerabilities, attacks and frauds. Actually, there is a possibility of happening those things. But being fear and not doing e-businesses due to these things is not the solution. And the last one that we have identified in here as non-technological issue is the reliability and trust. As most people uh, feel the reliability and trust with physical interactions, the earning reliability and trust in a virtual platform is a major issue. Good. Now the one last issue that we are going to talk about is channel conflict. Now what is channel conflict? Imagine that there is some middleman in between your business and the customer. It may be a distribution channel, it may be a delivery channel, it may be a dealer channel, whatever, there is some middleman in between you and the customer. So with e-businesses, you can bypass these middlemen and directly access the customer. If so, the resistance happening with these middleman channel would be called as channel conflict. If you do not handle this situation smoothly, surely there would be an channel conflict even though you totally cut down the middleman as well as selling directly to the end user while maintaining the physical middleman channel. Great, now we know the benefits we can have and the issues that we have to face when conducting an e-business. Now the question is whether we should be an e-business or not should be an e-business. By answering the following questions, we can find out whether we should be E or whether we should not be E. So by looking at the benefits and issues, we can find out the solutions for these questions. The first question we should ask ourselves is the suitability. Every business may not be going along with the e-business approach. So we have to find out whether our business is suitable to convert into an e-business. The second question is can we afford the cost because there is a high investment you have to carry on with converting your business into e-business or start up a e-business. The next one is facing failures. Can you face failures because there is a certain risk when you start up a e-business or converting your business into an e-business. So you have to find out from yourself whether you can face failures. The next question is can you deal with customer acceptance? Some customers may accept your initiative but some customers may not. If not, can you develop new strategies to attract them? Be innovative to be the change. If you can answer these questions with positive answers then there is no problem you can be the E. You can go along with e-business approach. And that's all what we got here in this episode. We basically talk about the issues we have to face and the benefits we can have when conducting an e-business. Thank you for watching and stay tuned on with Mastering X.